Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Dis Thunder from the Foosh, and let's do a look today at the Mezco Toys 112 Collective Mr. Freeze. While this figure was a long time in pre-order purgatory, we've never been particularly short on really good Mr. Freeze figures, so let's see how this one kind of stacks up. As an aesthetics choice, I would say this Mr. Freeze kind of leans into the Arkhamverse version that we're most familiar with, Arkham City in particular, where we had one of the greatest boss battles in video game history. And with that Arkham City sort of aesthetic, I think you also pick up hints of like the animated series and the new Batman Superman adventures because those obviously heavily inspired the Arkhamverse. But I think it's in the uh, the big chunky backpack and the large helmet and the, the large chest piece. These elements remind me a lot of one of my favorite figures of the DC superheroes line, particularly the uh, black and metallic blue recolored Mr. Freeze from about, what was that, 2007, I think? I'll touch on that again a little later in uh, relation to a really nice custom I've already seen of this figure. But before we get into any of that, let's talk nuts and bolts and go through some accessories, starting with his freeze rays. Now this first one here, there's a smaller version that can fit in a holster. Uh, there is a little bendy wire that you can insert into that, or the BFG freeze ray here that goes in a little spot below the, the handguard and the trigger. Um, this one is a really nice looking piece with all the flock material on it and has a light up feature. It's obviously the much more impressive of the two, but I have to admit I'm kind of partial to the small one just for posing and playability. Doesn't take away from how imposing this thing is though. I kind of wish you could fit one of the uh, freeze effects into that barrel. Um, I'll show you which one, you'll, you'll figure it out, but that's a very minor nitpick. Let's talk about those freeze effects and first let's talk about this uh, foot effect that you put over a figure's foot. This thing is really cool. Oh, oh God, Dustin, cool, seriously? But anyway, you would use it to make it look like you froze a figure's foot in place. Um, I use that in some shots later in the video. I can show you more detail. This one would go, uh, ideally, I think, over at the face or the head of a mezco size figure. Um, it could also fit, like, over a hand or a forearm, something like that. And then the last one, I thought actually plugged into the freeze ray, but it doesn't. It's more of a just kind of static in place. That would clip on, like, a torso or uh, something of similar size, like, kind of in place where he's left the effect... I don't know, fire and forget kind of thing. Let me bring him in a little closer here and we can discuss some articulation. The head is on a double ball joint, meaning there's one that goes into the head itself and then one that goes down into the collar. I'd say this is probably the most expressive joint on the figure, which is not a bad thing because Mr. Freeze is not known for his gymnastics, but he is known for some expression. As you can see here, these shoulder pauldrons are similar to like the Kriggs where they move a little bit and have some flexibility so you can get them up out of the way of the shoulder joint. There is a hinge swivel single elbow there which I know is not everyone's favorite, but it is functional and it seems appropriate not only for the character, but for the suit. You can see there is a little bit of torso range, kind of an upper or lower ball joint like normal. And the hips, um, they are ball jointed, but they are limited, I think, more by the suit than the actual body. So you're not going to get a real wide splits. You can get a, a fairly adequate double jointed knee band there. And then the boots actually have a decent range, but the more important thing is they feel like they're weighted, they're sturdy. They, they seem to be able to like offset the, the weight of the backpack, which is really the more important job for, uh, for an ankle joint for a figure of uh, this kind of build. There is definitely a bit of uh, give and take with the figure, and a lot of the take is on the side of the aesthetics and the suit design. So if that's something that bothers you, something you'll want to be aware of going into the figure, it might get under your skin. Let's get in a little closer so I can show you some of that aesthetic. Here's the freeze gun again with the LED turned on. You can see it has kind of a, a quilted pattern on the lower legs and then a, a kind of a dive suit feel actually overall. There's, there's the patterning there and then on the torso and it looks like an insulated costume. So that of course makes perfect sense. I have to mention though an interesting idea that I saw uh, from one of my friends on Instagram, Frigwam. He changed it out for the Baron Ben's black uh, dive suit which I imagine gives him a little bit better articulation and also it emulates my favorite DC superheroes version that I mentioned before. Let's come back to the smaller freeze ray and you can see it here holstered on the side of his belt. The holster is removable, which is pretty handy because sometimes it gets kind of bound up back there. And you can see here's the cable winding around to the back of his backpack. I like it in this bottom uh, port here, but you could also fit it in that middle one where the battery pack is hidden. You also have two alternate head options. They are very similar, if I'm being honest, but they're both excellent looking, so it's not really that big of a deal, I suppose. This one is maybe slightly more stern than the other one, if, if you wanted me to give you a 
particular difference. There you go, see he's kind of frowning more. Naturally, both these heads fit underneath the freeze dome helmet, which is obviously also removable. Here it is on the figure with what appears to be kind of like a, a breathing apparatus or maybe just a face shield that can also be pulled off to your discretion. You noticed earlier it has some light-up effects. Here is the backpack light-up effect also lighting up the inside of his collar. Um, I know my lighting in this area here is kind of harsh, but you can still see it glow that kind of nice uh, candy color blue. And like I mentioned, the batteries are hidden underneath this piece here in his backpack. Let me come back around to the helmet again. I can show you this uh, little face shield piece and how that works. As you can imagine, it's pretty self-explanatory. You take the helmet off and you can see it's got some nice stencil detail in there. Uh, I did notice mine has a little imperfection on the side there, like a little bit of paint or something. Not a big deal. Anyway, obviously you take that off and set it aside. When you want to remove this face shield piece, the trick to it is just pull it up and straight out. Don't bend it forward. It's on a small tab that you could very easily bend and have or break and have stuck in there for good. I think it looks great in both options, but I do kind of like how the face shield makes him feel uh, a little meaner, maybe just because you can't see any of his expression. It dehumanizes him a little bit. Honestly, it's pretty hard to make this figure look bad. Next, I'd like to do just a couple size comparisons for you, and unfortunately, I really wanted to use my DC Superheroes Mr. Freeze that I know I own at least four or five of at one point in time, but I couldn't find any of them in time for review sake. I do, however, still have my Lex Luthor, which you may remember shares about 80% of the same parts as that Mr. Freeze. Doesn't have the same uh, nostalgia tug that I was hoping for, but at least it might be useful information for you. And lastly, here he is with Supreme Knight Batman, which is the matchup I've wanted to have since the first solicitation pictures went up nearly three years ago. You'll notice that he's roughly the same height, actually. If you were to take the helmet and the cryo gear off, he's pretty close to the same height, which is a personal preference over having him be uh, hulking in appearance. So Mr. Freeze is obviously one of my favorite Batman rogues, and that stems from the animated series and the Arkham games, and this figure does a really nice job of kind of blending those elements together for me. The big question, of course, being whether he was worth the wait, I'm going to say yes. Like I mentioned, there are some sacrifices made in terms of functional articulation in favor of his aesthetics, but those aesthetics look really good, so I can't fault that decision. My understanding is he is showing up on the wait list. I don't know if he's available third-party sellers, but if you have an opportunity, I would definitely pick him up because I think he's one of Mezco's best villain figures thus far. So, of course, thanks to Mezco Toys for helping me get one to review. Thanks to my buddy Frigwam for letting me borrow some of his pictures and making me think maybe I want to do that custom. I don't know. But thanks to you guys for watching. We'll see you later.